Hi, welcome to another Scrapbook Pal video. I'm Kara, and the question for these mice today is, how good of friends are they? Well, the answer is blowing in the wind. So we're using Dandy Day Stitched Windy Backdrop in white. And this is the Meadow Backdrop Portrait, and that's in green. And the stump and the top of the stump as well. So I'm going to start by putting this sentiment on and that way I know where to put the other pieces. So I'm putting the meadow backdrop on top of the stitched windy backdrop so that I know what area I have to put those uh, sentiment pieces together. And I'm putting them so that they look like they are blowing along with the lines in the background and putting some anti-static powder on there and some clear ink because I'm going to white heat emboss this. All right there, how do you like that sentiment? All right, I know you can't see it, but once I put the powder on, and this is Lawn Fawn's white embossing powder, and sprinkle that on, and there, how do you like it now? Oh, I still can't see it. I know. Okay, well, I, I heated it up with a heat gun and melted that powder. And now, hopefully, you'll be able to see it because I'm putting some tumbled glass distress ink over the top of it. And that gives an emboss resist so that the white um, words will show up eventually. And it also will give me a blue sky. And I also want this to be a little bit purple. So this is shaded lilac, also just regular Distress Ink. I'm using a life-changing blender brush and I'm kind of putting the purple in circles, kind of like the wispy wind is looking in there just to give it a, kind of a, a two-tone look. And now I'm coming through on the edges with the Salty Ocean. And decided, yeah, I want this to be a little darker. So I'm really kind of uh, getting a bit heavier with the ink and probably not even seeing the tumbled glass anymore. <laughs> now we're just uh, shaded lilac and salty ocean. That way the, the white shows up on the words and also it goes with the um, color or the darkness of the grass. There I wiped away the ink from the words so that they show up well and I am ink blending the grass just to give it a little contrast and here is just some paper in between so that I can get the top edges of the hills without getting it on the bottom of the hill behind it and now you can see the difference there getting the top grass and just going to put some gathered twigs, Distress Ink, on the sides of the stump and then on the top so the stump looks rounded and there's just some variation in the, in the color. All right, now I've got my backdrops together and there's the stump and it's time to start stamping out the images. So I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black Ink because I'm going to Copic Color on these images. And we've got our two friends, the mice, and some dandelion fluff. I'll wipe that off with my Lawn Fawn chamois. And onto these dandelions. Now I really wanted a big dandelion field. Um, not in my yard, but uh, somewhere out in the wild where they can be free <laughs> and not uh, get sprayed like uh, my neighborhood. <laughs> Please don't be in my neighborhood. All right, so I'm really getting a lot of dandelions there. And it's time to color, and I wasn't sure what colors, and so I took my Copic marker chart and kind of matched up the greens, and I like the YG03 and the YG-17. These are small spaces, so I'm coming in and just coloring the whole stem or leaf with the YG-03 so that um, usually I will just 
color in where I like the shadows and I color that with my lightest and then go to a darker one in those shadows and then blend out from there but th these are so thin or small so just covering the entire stem and then coming in with the YG17 and putting in the the shadows the shaded areas and for the stems I'm just uh, putting a little at the top and bottom just to show some variation in those color in the in the stems um, not really trying to shade them as much as just give them some highlight I guess all right now I decided I want them a little different than the background so I'm brightening them up with a YG09 just getting them to be uh, they're in the same uh, color family but just giving them a, a bit different look uh, than the grass so that they don't blend in too much all right so what's a good dandelion color well, I decided on Y13 and Y17 and I didn't use the Y15 because these are small areas as well and I wanted a big contrast so just skipped one of the colors and I'll blend the Y17 in with the Y13 and I'm not worrying if it's not really well blended. Well on to the seeded dandelions and I'm putting a little warm gray for the centers so W1 and 2 and then inside the uh, fluffy areas I'm kind of putting some lines I'm using this W2 so that it looks like they're full and rounded not uh, so they're not 2D they're they're looking more 3D there so adding in those extra seeds in the background and then around the center kind of where that that part of the seed sticks into the center there want to get that dark and so I'm using a, a W3 to get that to look darker all right lots of seeds now onto our mice and I'm coloring them in in cool grays and so I'm coming in with my lightest this is a C0 to find my shadows and that way I can come back in where I like it and if I didn't like it I haven't messed anything up because it was a light color and I liked where those were so now I'm coming in with a C1 and I'm really taking it on to uh, a C4 so skip the two and the three we're on to a C4 that's as dark as I'm gonna go with these shadows on the mice and then I'll blend that out from there gradually. Here's the C3. Just getting in the areas that would be darker. And then with the C1. It's just a small area too, so I don't need to blend too much. I really want a contrast, so between the dark and the light. So there's my C1 almost done and then I'll blend it out a little further with the C0 and it's time to pinken up those oh the cheeks and the nose and the ears so I'm using an R21 for that and then I'm going to come back in with the C1 to gray up those ears make it look like there's some depth there and make sure I didn't lose any of the pink so just coming back in with a little more pink time for my second little mouse and I decided to start in with the C1 because I knew those shadows were going to be somewhat dark so starting with that C1 to find those shadows and then back in with the dark as the C4 to really put in those shadows so I'm saying my light source is from the upper right so my shadows are on the bottom left here's the C3 to blend that up into the body some 
and then with the C1. So I'm really using the same process that I did with the other mouse. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you can see it, but you know, it's really the same process from the C1 to the C0, blending that further into the body. And then I'm coming back with the C3 to darken up the shadows that sort of got blended away and make sure that it blends into the rest of the body. And now I'm slowing it back down. Here's that R21 for the nose and cheeks and ears, and then darken it up with the C3 and C1. And make sure it stays pink. <laughs> All right, it's time to cut these out. So I'm using the coordinating dies, and I wanted to show you they're very intricate. And I, I just love that because it, it cuts them very close. And with this dandelion fluff, it, it cuts it into separate pieces as well. So I'm going to cut everything out with that. And you can see them on the side now. And it's time to put things together. So I'm going to start with, this is the Lawn Fawn glue tube. And just putting a thin amount of glue around the edges. And that way, I can still tuck things into the grass if I need to or want to. So putting that on. And this glue has an, a nice heavy grip, so I know that uh, it's going to stay even if I didn't put any glue on the grass part. And I realize my background is where I wanted it was a little further up, so I'm just trimming away some of that in the back. And you'll never see that. And I will glue that stump and the top of the stump together as well. And time for the fun part. Uh, I don't know if you had these when you were a kid. I had color forms. And this, this so reminds me of color forms. Because they were like these vinyl pieces that were little images. Kind of like these guys. And you could stick them on a scene background anywhere you wanted. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like... Uh, scene building on cards so much but okay here's our dandelion fluff and uh, you can see they were cut into smaller areas so there's three and one and two and just deciding how they're going to flow uh, along with the sentiment and then I've got a jewel picker here just picking those up putting a little dot of glue down and then getting the dandelion fluff glued where I have that. All right, those are all set. And now I've got to decide about this field of dandelions. How many are we going to put in here? I use my scissors as a wedge, kind of helps to get that grass up so I can tuck things back inside. And I played with this quite a bit, you know, how, how many dandelions makes a field how many are enough? And uh, when does it get to be too much? <laughs> so I'm putting in the, the leafy parts for those dandelions. And it's starting to get a little overloaded, I think. So I have the large dandelions in the front and the small ones in the back to give it a little perspective. Maybe I should take out all the big ones and just keep little ones. Uh, sure. Sure is fun to play with it though. And it was nice that I cut out enough images that I could really decide where I wanted what and how many I wanted. But uh, by the time I finished, I had quite a few left over because this field uh, decided didn't need quite as many dandelions as I thought it did. Well, here I put it and it just looks like they're uh, in a circle. <laughs> so. I thought I, you know, I'd step back and I'd look and I'd decide, okay, well, uh, this is looking a little too linear, so I'm gonna push some up. And I came back in with the dart with the uh, bigger ones to kind of hide the stems of the smaller ones. Took those leaves out because with these little ones, it was looking a little too heavy. And now I'm putting everything down, gluing it down where I think I want it and putting in some of the large ones in the front so that the field looks like it's continuing on into the back. 
So a lot of fun just to arrange. I guess it's flower arranging in a way. <laughs> All right, just getting the final ones glued onto the front. And there it is. This is this is what I decided was enough. Not too many, not too few. <laughs> Yeah, it's all fun. It's it's uh, what you like, whatever you like. Now I'm putting on some thick, this is the Tombow uh, foam tape, and I'm putting it on our little guy because I want him to look like he's kind of further in front than the back of that field. And just getting off the release tape and putting him up there in the sky. And make sure he's right where I want him. And then with his little friend, I put some foam tape on the top and glue on the bottom so that he's kind of looking a bit 3D here as well. And make sure that that glue adheres to that stump. And now I can trim off the stems of the dandelions in front. Just doing a little trimming. And now I have it just how I want it. There's our panel, and I'm going to adhere it to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I'm using some Tombow dot tape runner and adhering it to the card. Now where I stamped that sentiment, there are those dotted lines to show the wind. And so some of the uh, embossing powder didn't quite stick on there perfectly so I'm taking a Signo white gel pen and just dotting in to cover where those uh, lines kind of intersect with the words. And now I want to add a little sparkle to the dandelion fluff. I'm using the Lawn Fawn glitter pen and just putting that where the fluff would be. I'll angle that a little so hopefully you can see that shimmer but in real life it's it's very sparkly. Well, I hope you enjoyed the card today, and if you did, if you would like and subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal channel, all the supplies I use today can be found at scrapbookpal.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!